So today I want to talk about what it means to be a woman. Now before you laugh too much or roll your eyes a little bit too much, uh, you know, being on this planet for 44 years, you know, maybe learned a few things, especially with the help of the teachings of the church, the writings of the church, of what it, what it means to be a woman, the dignity of women. And so one of the things I've learned through those teachings, learned uh, through time here on earth, is that this, is women are a mystery. And that's a good thing. Now, we use that word sometimes, especially guys, you know, when their wives are upset with them, you know, they can't figure out why, well, women are a mystery. You know, they use that word uh, because they, you know, you know, to maybe mean something that's, okay, this is impossible to figure out, totally incomprehensible. But that's not what a mystery is, right? So I like that word. I think there's, there's something to dive into there. What is an actual mystery? We think of a mystery novel or a mystery movie, right? A mystery is something that's fascinating, something that draws you in. It's captivating because there's a depth there. There's so much going on you want to figure out. It's so interesting you want to know what's going to happen. Hmm. So when I say women are a mystery, what's, what's going on there? Maybe, maybe, maybe this will ring true in your experience, experience ladies. You know, so many women experience this depth within them. That there's so much going on inside of them, and thoughts and emotions and worries and concerns, so much going on inside of them. There's this depth in them that they don't even fully understand at times. And they even feel like, does anybody understand this? Is it just too much? There's just too much going on, you know? And yet she longs to feel understood, longs to feel heard and known and cherished, that everything that she is, everything that's going on inside of her is of value, is of worth. She experiences this in her, at times, a desire to feel captivating, fascinating, to, be, to, really, to feel beautiful in the true good sense of the word. For someone to see the depths of who she is as a person and light up with joy and say, wow, amazing, beautiful. Like the person who she, that person that she is is worthy of paying attention to, is fascinating, that her heart is something valuable, precious, beautiful, captivating. Is this ringing true at all, ladies? <laughs> now, I'm not saying that this depth, this reality is completely exclusive 100% to women and guys experience 0% of this. You know, there's a depth to guys that goes far deeper than just, where's the remote? You know, there's, <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is that there's a giftedness here, whether it's 70, 30, 80, 20, 60, 40, I don't know, but there's a giftedness here that God has written into a woman's heart that women experience maybe more directly or more, more fervently or strongly. This is part of what Pope John Paul II calls the feminine genius in his writings, the feminine genius. There's something here. Now, what does the world say? What's the message of the world to this, this, this desire to feel captivating, this depth of, you know, what's going on there? Well, the message of the world, well, is, is this. Is, okay, ladies, you got to spend hundreds of dollars on makeup and putting your face on. I don't know what that phrase is all about. I mean, Halloween maybe, but I don't know. What is that? You know, getting your hair done, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, spending hundreds of dollars on the perfect outfit. You know, don't even get me started about the shoes, you know. So you can take the perfect photo or you can walk out and meet your friends. Oh, that's so cute. You know, take like this perfect picture, this perfect life, this perfect photo. And then, well, that's not enough. You can't post that photo, but you got to find the perfect filter for that photo, right? It's been hours and hours. So, oh, maybe this, maybe this. And then you post and then you wait. And I anticipate is someone going to like this post or my friend's going to like it. And all your friends are like, you better like my post and tell me how beautiful I am within five seconds or we're not even friends anymore. And then maybe, maybe, just maybe someone will notice. Someone will like that post or, you know, want to get to know you. That sounds exhausting. That sounds exhausting, ladies. Isn't that exhausting? That pressure, that expectation. Not only expensive, (laughs) that sounds exhausting. And this is why I think so many young women today struggling with depression, struggling with self-hatred, struggling with eating disorders and all sorts of other destructive, harmful behaviors, experiencing this pressure, experiencing the pressure of social media, all these things, it's, it's, it's exhausting reality. But I have good news. We have good news, don't we? 
doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to get caught in that trap. What is the word of the Lord? What is the word of the Lord to women today? He said it in Isaiah 43, you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. You are precious and honored in my eyes and I love you. And just before he says this, he says, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. This depth within you, all that, all that, all that you have, all that you are, this, this reality in you is, has captivated the Father's heart because he made you. And what he longs for, what he wants for you is to see yourself through his eyes, to know what it means to be made in the image of God, to have this priceless, precious worth, this priceless dignity that he's given you, a worth, a value, a beauty, a preciousness that cannot be destroyed and is not increased or decreased by the number of likes on social media. Again, this is part of the feminine genius that both men and women are created in the image of God and have perfectly equal dignity and value, this priceless dignity. But there's this giftedness. Women are created with this giftedness, this feminine genius, to reflect that God is a captivating mystery. That God is fascinating and amazing, can captivate his, who he is, at the depths of who he is, can captivate us for all eternity. As women experience this within them, this depth, this desire to feel beautiful and captivating because they've been gifted with this grace to reflect that God is beautiful. So people look and say, well, God, the God that created them must be amazing. To think about this, that you were created by God and God only knows how to make masterpieces. Something in the image of God is something valuable. So, so hear this, ladies, you are an irreplaceable unrepeatable, captivating, and beautiful, precious reflection of the glory of God. I'll say it again. You are an irreplaceable, unrepeatable, captivating, beautiful reflection of the glory of God. You are made in the image of God that makes you priceless. God doesn't know how to create replicas, and he definitely doesn't know how to create junk. He doesn't know how to create garbage. He's incapable of creating garbage, so stop calling yourself that. And stop comparing yourself, well, I don't look as like this person, and I don't look like that person. I don't look like this airbrushed, artificially photoshopped person on a magazine. Good. God doesn't create, God's not in the creative business of creating replicas. He's in the business of creating masterpieces made in his image. A man looks to the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You have a depth in you. And, that, and, it, and there's so much going on inside of each person. Again, that it can feel like, right? It can feel like, oh man, is this, this is just, am I just too much? Am I just too much? Well, yeah, for any one human being, for any finite human, yeah, you were designed to be too much for more, more too much for any one, any finite human being. You were made for the infinite God. You're too much for any one, any finite human being, any collection of all the humans in the world to fully understand. You are made for the infinite God. He and he alone can fully understand you, even better than you understand yourself. He and he alone can know, make you feel known and cherished and appreciated and loved more than anyone else. Because he sees you. He sees you out of the crowd. He sees you and cherishes you. You're precious and honored in my eyes, and I love you. Now, maybe there's something inside of you right now that's saying, well, yeah, I, 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 want, I want to believe that, Father, but, you know, I've been through so much, so much, so much going on. It just seems impossible. I just don't know. We have a Savior, right? Again, we're not, we're not going to follow the message of the world that says, well, look to the mirror, you know, and mirror, mirror on the wall. No. Look to social media. Look to other, No. What does is, what is the Lord invite us to? He invites us to look to the sacred heart of Jesus Christ. He invites us to look to he himself, God himself. 
He invites you to see yourself through his eyes, the eyes of the one that bled for you, the eyes for the one that conquered death for you, who knows you completely, sees everything, 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 and says, I will conquer death for this person. And he invites you to his heart, to his love. And so important, I think, so important for all of us, uh, you know, uh, to spend time asking the Lord, Lord, how do you see me? I want to see myself through your eyes because your word is truth. Words of the world, man, they're all over the map. Your word is life. Your word is truth. I want to define myself by how you see me, by what your word is. To spend time with the Lord and to allow this grace because he knows you. It's a reality to open your heart to him and say, okay, Lord, I know you search me and you know me, as it says in the psalm. You know me. You know everything. And to receive that cherishing knowledge of you, that receive the Lord's presence, to receive that gift of him receiving everything of you, cherishing it, knowing you, and to find real peace there. Maybe it means that our, you know, to to reject this, this cultural reality of the vanity, this cultural reality of superficiality that tries to reduce people to outfits and posts and likes and all this stuff, to reject this, this culture, this tragic, tragic culture of sexy. Is this sexy enough? Ugh. People are so more valuable than that. And to embrace the culture of sacred, sacred, the Lord God says in Leviticus, to me you shall be sacred, for I the Lord am sacred. I have set you apart from the other nations to be my own. And so he says in 1 Peter, he says, let not yours be the outward adoring with braiding of hair and decorations of gold and wearing of fine clothing, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with an imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. To look to the Lord Jesus Christ, who says, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Remain in my love. This is the invitation. You know, one practical idea, ladies, um, you know, is to put a crucifix on your mirror. Put a crucifix on your mirror so that every time you see yourself, you're reminded of your worth. That's your price tag right there. Not some, some label, not some outfit. You were not ransomed with some label from some designer. You were ransomed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, who loves you. You know, it can be so powerful for, for all of us, but ladies especially, to, to look to the Scriptures and see how God interacts, how, God, how the Lord Jesus interacts with the various people in the Scriptures. You know, we look to Samaritan woman, you know, five husbands living with a guy that's not her husband. I mean... What do the people call that now? A hot mess, you know? I don't, really, I don't know if I like that phrase or not, but it's, you know, whatever. You know, and she may be wondering, like, this, am I just too much? Am I just a burden? Am I just, you know, is anybody actually not going to reject me and toss me aside and give up on me? Yes, his name is Jesus Christ, who went to hell and back for you, who gives his life for you, right? And, and what does Jesus do? Out of all the people on the earth, he shows up to that random person in that random part of the world, shows up to that person and says, here is your Redeemer, and offers her to tra a transformation, changes her life forever. We look at someone like Mary Magdalene, right, possessed by seven demons. Talk about problems. Maybe she wondered, am I even worthy of help? Yes. Does God care? Yes. Jesus shows up. He sees her. He shows up and frees her. And how does he transform her life? Not by just saying, oh, that's tough, you know, have a nice day, or here's some extra rules to follow. No, he offers her a life-giving relationship, a transforming relationship with her Redeemer. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And he offers her new life in him. My beloved daughters, the Lord sees you. The Lord God cherishes you. The Lord God is always there to receive everything your heart can pour out, and he offers you his heart in return. You know, I mentioned, I asked, why am I talking about this? Well, the readings, you know, when I look at the readings, the first reading in the, in the gospel, you see these widows, these random people, you know, in the midst of a crowd, and yet the Lord sees them. You see their trust. 
right? The widow in the Old Testament at the time of Elijah, going to make her last meal for her and her kid before they starve to death with the last amount of food they have. And Elijah shows up and, and says, thus says, thus says, you know, go, why don't you, why don't you make me some food first? It's like, I mean, that's a bold claim right there. That's a pretty bold claim. And because he says, thus says the Lord, the jar will not come out, not run dry, not run out. And she places her entire livelihood, her entire life in the Lord's hands and the Lord comes through for her. And she eats for a whole, her and her child eat for a whole year. And we see in the gospel today, this, this poor widow only a few coins, a few cents to, to her name. And yet the Lord knows her name. The Lord sees her. The Lord sees her value in the midst of the crowds, in the midst of all these people offering all these other great, amazing things. He sees that she's put in her whole livelihood, her whole self, and that is valuable and precious to the Lord, far more than some, some other things. He's, she's entrusting her whole life. And what does he do? He gives his whole life on the cross. He gives his whole life for her to offer her redemption, to offer her salvation. He doesn't just say, here's some, here, okay, you gave me a few coins, here's some money, I'll change your circumstances, give you, make your life a little easier. No, he offers himself something far better. He offers his very heart, his very love, his very self. This is the invitation. To know a peace that the world cannot give. To, to turn away from the, the exhausting race out there a culture that's so confused that either says you got to do all these things to feel good about yourself or, or just reject and say there's no difference between men and women and men can be women and women can be men. No, all of that is all, no, to embrace the gospel message that you are sacred and precious, to know a peace through being known, cherished, and loved by God himself, a peace and joy that, become, be, that comes from being offered the only thing that can satisfy your amazing heart, and that is the infinite, loving, sacred heart of Jesus Christ, his infinite love. Now, a word to guys. There's a beautiful quote from St. John Paul II uh, to men. He says, God has assigned as a duty to every man the dignity of every woman. So good, I'll say it again. God has assigned as a duty to every man the dignity of every woman. One of your roles as men is to defend that which is honorable, to defend the dignity of, children, of your children, to defend the dignity of women from, de from denigration, from destruction, starting first with your own heart. Right? A heart has fallen, has tempted, all sorts of things. And so how do you live this out? How do you honor this, this captivating reality, this mystery that God has created in the dignity of women? But first, it's, be, it's again refusing to fall into that culture of lust, the culture of impurity. You're turning away from all the filth that's on the internet, the filth that's in various movies and all sorts of garbage. And to teach your sons about purity, teach them about respecting women and respecting the dignity of the person and not reducing them to mere objects. You know, if your sons have cell phones or tablets, to take them away today and to not give them back until they have filters on them to block out the garbage. We live in a very impure world, and if you're handing a teenage boy an unfiltered internet, access, unfiltered internet access, that is highly irresponsible. You're asking him to fight a battle with no castle walls, and the world is too messed up for that. You gotta set him up for success in this, in this tragic world. Husbands, fathers, you can honor this great mystery and, and, and remind your, your spouse and your, children, your, your daughters of this, of this reality frequently. One simple thing, one simple thing you can do. Whenever your wife or your daughter walks into the room, the TV goes off. The TV hits pause. And what does that say to them? What does that convey to them in that moment? That you are far more captivating than what's on this screen, wife. And you don't have to fight for my attention. You have it immediately. How many women feel like they have to fight the screen to get their husband's attention, and it just creates this resentment? And guys can zone in. I understand how guy, I'm a guy. I understand we can lose track of all of reality, right? Like, zone and watch the, like, you know, girls could sit there and watch TV, and they're thinking about all sorts of things. Guys are just like, brain, just in observer mode. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Like, how can that be possible? It's, guys can do that, actually, <laughs> you know. So she walks in, pause. Hi, honey, what's up? Hi, daughter, how are you? What a beautiful thing. If she, has, if she has to feel like she has to fight to get your attention, fathers, 
you know, start looking for that attention somewhere else in, in unhealthy ways, and you don't want that. What a simple thing. You know, to pray with your spouse and your daughter, to ask the Lord to help them see themselves through the Lord's eyes, to remind them of the Lord's word. You are precious and honored in, God, in his eyes, in God's eyes, and he loves you. To remind them that they are valuable, that you cherish, that you're grateful that they exist. You're happy, grateful, and feel honored that they're in your life. To remind them of this, this great reality um, frequently. And then to make time for them to pray, right, so that they can experience this because you can't, you can't complete it. You can't fulfill that. There's, there's too much going on there. But you can say, why don't I watch the kids so you can go to the chapel and let the Lord love on you? Why don't I want to watch the kids so I can give you some time to, so that the Lord, who knows you completely more than anyone else could ever possibly, he can fill your heart with his love that he has for you. You know, to teach your daughter how to pray and encounter that love for herself. So now there's so much more that can be said, you know, and I'm, I'm already pushing it time-wise. You know, this, 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 all the church's teachings on the feminine genius, the dignity of women, it's so beautiful. There's so much there. It's just one component of so many. And I would encourage you to look at um, St. John Paul II's letter to women or his apostolic letter, Mulieris Dignitatum, on the dignity of women. Uh, there's so much there that's, that's worthy of reflection in the teachings of the church. The teachings of the church on the dignity of women is just very beautiful. You know, for example, there's so much that can be said about the amazing giftedness of relationality that women have, it, have this, at, at, at this attention to relationality. You know, like I said, guys can be zoned in on something and girls are like thinking about this person and that person. We should call this person, you know. There's this giftedness. Again, not to the exclusion of guys. Guys care about people. But there's this giftedness there. Um, you know, they, and it's shown in their soul and their emotions and even their body. They can literally grow a relationship. They can grow a human. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. And this giftedness that women have of sacrificial love of really pouring themselves out, sacrificing themselves, their very bodies, of course, for their children, their sleep, <laughs> their sanity, you know, it's like, you know, this is this giving of themselves to the people that they care about is so powerful, so beautiful. But I'll end with just, just these two quotes, uh, if you'll permit me, on, um, uh, from St. John Paul II, the first in Mulieris Dignitatum. He says, the personal resources of femininity are certainly no less than the resources of masculinity, they are merely different. Hence, a woman, as well as a man, must understand her fulfillment as a person, her dignity and vocation on the basis of these resources, according to the richness of the femininity which she, has, which she received on the day of creation. Then again, in Redemptoris Mater, talking about Mary, of course, the greatest woman of all. It can thus be said that women, by looking to Mary, find in her the secret of living their femininity with dignity and of achieving their own true advancement. In the light of Mary, the church sees in the face of women the reflection of a beauty which mirrors the loftiest sentiments of which the human heart is capable, the self-offering totality of love, the strength that is capable of bearing the greatest sorrows, limitless fidelity and tireless devotion to work, the ability to combine penetrating intuition with words of support and encouragement. So ladies, thank you. Thank you for all that you do, all that you are, the world doesn't understand what it means to be a woman, but the Lord does. The Lord God understands you. He sees you. He sees you like no one else can. And he loves you. And he offers his, you his heart so that you can abide in his love. And his love can abide in you. So how about we close with a prayer for our beloved daughters of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness, we thank you for creating us in your image, and we thank you for uh, creating women to be a reflection of your mysterious, captivating beauty. We thank you for the dignity that you've given them. We ask that you would grant them more and more each day to grant the grace to see themselves through your eyes, to know that they are made in your image, to see their precious dignity. Grant them whatever graces they need to invite your love, your mercy, your presence into their hearts more and more each day so they can know a peace that only you can give. You know them, you love them, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you've done through Christ our Lord. Amen.